my friends, viewers, and followers. Welcome back to another episode. So for your all outdoor fans, I'm gonna have two more episodes filmed outdoors and then we're gonna start the indoor filming. So you will have to wait who likes, who is a fan of the indoor filming. So as you can see, it's the main river in the background. And it really doesn't feel like um, summer anymore, even though here in the sun it's a little bit uh, wind shielded. So I feel really comfortable right now. But um, today, this morning, we had actually six degrees. So it's really getting there where it feels like autumn. So this is my little um, dog that I take care of during the week and when her family is on vacation and Sam, my own dog, that you probably have seen in other videos already. Sam? Yeah! Good! So they're joining me <laughs> for the next reading. Oh, by the way, um, I'm not going to start a new um, Instagram account for you guys who ask right now. I just don't have time for another Instagram account. If you want to see uh, fresh new content that I put out regularly, like pictures and short clips maybe, um, then you need to join my Patreon page. And you can find the link in the About section of this YouTube channel. So, all my Patreons can see all the content. So it doesn't matter how much you donate, uh, you can see all the content. Let's continue with Chapter 6. The first purification to be made is that of sin, and that means the holy sacrament of penance. Seek the best confessor that you can. Take some, one of the books prepared for the aid of the conscience and read it carefully and observe minutely wherein you have sinned from the earliest period up to the present time. And if you distrust your memory, write down what you have discovered. So, um, First of all, we want to go to uh, the sacrament of confession. What is confession? And I know all you that have maybe a more evangelical background or Protestant background, you don't know anything about confession. And most people think, well, how can a priest uh, uh, give me an absolution of my sins? Exactly. Let me explain it just a little bit. So the priest, as a person, as a human being, no human being has, has the power to give you absolution. But the office of the priest, of a real Catholic priest or Orthodox priest, has the office. So it's almost like, okay, the policeman is a representative of the government. He doesn't have power on his own. He can't just go out and, uh, you know, give out tickets because he feels like it. No, he has the power of authority given to him by the state. And if he abuses his power, he really gets in trouble. And so it's the same with a priest. A priest has the office. He represents Jesus in that sense. And when you go to confession, you explain and tell that priest all that you have sinned. And he is obliged to keep it a secret. He cannot talk to anyone about anything you have said. And then he can give you, because he has the office of authority, the absolution in the name of Jesus. So it's actually not really the priest giving you the absolution or forgiveness, but it is Jesus himself who passed on the office to a priest to represent him. So it's the office. So um, again, confession is really important that you can let go of your sin and you really feel it. You know that you're being forgiven and God is so gracious. You see, if you just pray, a lot of people say, well, I can just pray to God and to Jesus and ask for forgiveness. You can, you can. But do you ever feel like you really are forgiven? Do you know 
by heart that you're forgiven? See, this is why you can go to a priest and he will give you the sign of absolution and you can be sure of that you are forgiven. And he also, a confessor, a good confessor, can give you advice of how, you know, how, for example, to overcome a sin, especially if you do it over and over and over again. He can give you really good, give you good pointers of um, how you can overcome. So, and there's, um, you can, um, you can think about, uh, there's uh, books and little booklets out there that help you with confession. For example, sometimes you just don't know where to start. Like, where would you even confess? What would you confess? And you can have a little pamphlet and you can even look it up on the internet. It's a preparation for confession. And there you can find pointers of, you know, little questions that you can ask yourself. Well, have I committed that sin or this sin or that sin? And it will actually help you. So, Having thus examined and collected the sinful wounds of your conscience, detest them and with your whole heart reject and abhor them by contrition, remembering these four things, that by sin you have lost God's grace, forfeited heaven, merited hell, and renounced the eternal love of God. You see, Philothea, that I am now speaking of a general confession of the whole past life, which although not always absolutely necessary, I still hold to be a most profitable beginning and recommended it strongly. So if you have never confessed before, you can make a general confession of your entire life from your childhood on. And sometimes if you were unsure if you confess this or that sin in your past, you can do a general confession. The ordinary confessions of those who live a commonplace material life are full of faults frequently they make little or no preparation and come without the requisite contrition. Therefore, confess with a tacit intention of repeating their sins, since they will neither avoid the occasion of falling nor take the needful steps for amending their lives. To all, such a general confession is requisite to assure the soul. So, if you have a certain sin that you are doing, you need to make a plan that you don't sin anymore and maybe avoid the occasion of sinning. So it takes a little bit of thought and preparation. How can I avoid this or that sin? Furthermore, it increases our self-knowledge, incites a health sorrow for our past sins, fills us with the admiration of the patience and mercy of God, calms our heart, relieves our minds, excites in us good resolutions, enables our spiritual fathers to guide us with more certainty and opens our heart to speak fully and with confidence in our future confessions. Therefore, in preparing for an entire renewal of our heart and dedication of our soul to God, in commencing a devout life, I do not hesitate to recommend as a first step this general confession. So general confession and in confession about your entire life. All the children of Israel actually departed from Egypt, but they did not all depart heartily. Therefore, in the desert, some of them regretted the flesh, the melons and the leeks and the onions of Egypt after number 11. And some penitents, though they forsake the sin outwardly, do not forsake this, the love of sin. That is to say, that is to say, the resolve to sin no more. But it is with reluctance that they abstain from the fatal delights of sin. Their hearts renounce it and seek to depart, but they frequently look longingly behind them, as did Lot's wife. So, uh, the children of Israel went out of Egypt and they were started complaining uh, even though God um, really helped them and gave them food and helped them to feed them and to, to give them drink and everything they missed you know the the full pots that they had in Egypt the onions the meat that whatever food they had 
Sorry about that break. There were wasps all around my dogs and they're actually trying to get to the wasp and you know that this is a fatal thing. So I need to like stop the video in that case and stop the wasp from flying around them. So the Israelites, they loved their pots, the food pots that they had in Egypt and they were missing it. Uh, instead of being grateful to be freed, they started complaining. So it's almost like with our sin, um, when you when you let go of the sin, but you longingly think of, oh, I wish I could do uh, or have or whatever it is that your sin is. I wish I could smoke pot. I wish I could go out and get drunk or I wish I, I could be violent or I don't know what your sin is. So whatever it is, but if you're longingly still think of, oh, I wish I could, then that means you haven't let go really of the sin. So uh, that's not a good thing. That's really, really not a good idea. So, and Lot's wife, um, Lot was with Abraham. It was the cousin of Abraham and they lived in Sodom and Gomorrah. I don't know if in Sodom or Gomorrah, but one of the two cities. And because of Abraham, an angel, actually two angels went and got Lot and his family out of this really, really sinful city that God wanted to destroy because of their way of life, because of their sin. And the angel said when uh, he took the family uh, of Lot out of the city that nobody shall turn around and look back, like longing look back, you know, at the place that they just went out of. And so Lot's wife actually looked back and she did not obey. And what happened is she, w she became a salt pillar. So this is why um, uh, he's writing like Lot's wife. They abstain from sin as a sick man abstains from dainties, which the physicians tell him will be fatal to him if he eats thereof. He abstains, but most unwillingly. He talks about them and measures how far he has to transgress. At least he would fain behold what he desires and envies those who can indulge in what is forbidden to him. So he has never let go. He, he's still longing for, for these things. Thus, these weak, cowardly penitents for a while refrain from sin, but reluctantly. They would fain be able to sin and yet escape condemnation. They have still all the taste of forbidden gratification and count those happy who enjoy it. Thus a man who's bent on revenge will change his mind whilst he's in confession, but directly after he will find a satisfaction in discussing the subject of his dispute amongst his friends, saying that, but for the fear of God, he would do so and so, and it is hard to forgive. Would he might lawfully seek revenge and so forth. So it's like somebody who wants to take revenge, but just for the love of God, he can't, but he so wish to, he so wish to push or, or um, hit that person. But for the love of God, he won't, but he's imagining it even in his mind, how beautiful it would be to do so. So that, that's not good. That's not fully letting go of it, forgiving and, you know, really lovingly for the love of God letting things go. It is not this man still hindered with the indication of sin and although he has come out of Egypt are not the t his taste and affections lingering there with its leek and garlic? So also with a woman who having abandoned her unlawful attachment still delights in admirations. Alas, such persons are in great danger. A great danger to fall into that sin again. But you, my daughter, since you desire to commence the devoured life, must not only forsake the sin, but wholly cleanse your heart of all attachments of sin. For besides the danger to relapse, these wretched, wretched affections enfeeble the spirit and weigh it down so that you cannot be ready, constant and diligent in performing good works, in which lies the very essence of devotion. 
a soul which having forsaken actual sin is yet always encumbered with his languished inclinations reminds me of a person who is not ill and yet is pale ailing in all his functions eating without appetite sleeping without rest laughing without gladness and who instead of walking briskly drags himself wearily along such a soul performs good actions but with such spiritual languor as to deprive them of all grace and to make them sancti and ineffective so it's really hard for this person who doesn't really want to let go and is still longing to do this sin or you know to act in this um, sinful way to truly uh, devoutly live the life he wants to because he's still in chains it's not outward chains because he's maybe not doing it outwardly but inwardly he is still in prison still longing for this sinful thing that he you know he's so longing to do and that is a prison and to me a remedy is first of all confession and really trying to get yourself never into that position where you sin but also to make the good resolution and to pray to God to help you. I mean, it's, it's as simple as that. You need help and the grace of God can heal it and help you. So God bless you. And I see you in the next episode. See you.